We're going to be starting off this episode with perhaps one of the most controversial Star Wars characters of all time, which is Greedo. And when I say controversial, I'm of course referring to the whole who shot first dilemma. Mostly everyone says that Han shot first because that's how it, it originally was, but there's one man, one man who disagrees, and that man is George Lucas. Of course, George Lucas. I think that badly editing Han's head and making it look like he dodged, it, it was one of the worst edits of the special editions alongside Jedi Rocks and that that scene with Han and CGI Jabba. You, got, you guys remember that? It was terrible. We haven't forgotten your sins, George. We remember. Java, you're a wonderful human being. Basca. Anyway, Greedo is basically just like Zam Wessel. I I forgot to mention that bounty hunters can use grapple points, but basically any character with a gun can use grapple points, so it's kind of a moot point, I guess. Greedo is above Zam Wessel because he's just more memorable, I guess. I mean, Zam, he's, well, Zam and Greedo are both throwaway characters, as I mentioned, so whatever. Does anyone really care about Bosk? I'm, I mean, he's a filthy reptilian, the very menaces that are contaminating the American government. Well, I, I guess he was called on by Darth Vader to complete a task, so that's gotta count for something. Speaking of transitions, which I hope is how you pronounce it, and also it's Bosk's species, um, there's a certain transition from an old Star Wars comic that I, I want to talk about. I think his name is Slisk? I, I, it's weird since there's there's no vowels except for the Y's. And he's a, he's a minor character of what I want to talk about. To be honest, I just want to talk about my favorite Star Wars comic, and this comic is Knights of the Old Republic. And no, it's, it's not the game, it's the comic book series, and it follows a young Jedi named Zane Carrick who is framed for killing his fellow Padawans when in reality it was his master. It's pretty messed up, but it's, it's, it's a good read. I, I definitely recommend it to anyone who likes Star Wars, if you haven't really heard of it before here, before now. It might be a bit hard to find original issues of the comic since this was before Disney bought it, but it was reprinted into one of those epic collection that Marvel publishes. It's the Old Republic epic collection, just saying in case you're wondering. Also, I forgot to say, but uh, Bonnie Hunters have a specialized panel for them, which makes them even more useful. It's kind of, kind of an, an exclusive thing, if I do say so myself. Next up is Dengar, and he's the last standard bounty hunter. All bounty hunters after this point can do something beyond a blaster and bomb and bounty hunter panel. Why is Dengar ahead of all the other bounty hunters thus far? Well, I, I, I just like him the most. That's really it. I do like his design in this game more than any other physical version of Dengar today. They did update his minifigure design in later years, but to be honest, I like this design the most, even though it's the least accurate. Dengar has his whole face exposed, but in this game, it's just his eyes. I think I like this version more because when I was a kid, I thought Dengar was a space ninja. Space ninjas in Star Wars would look a lot better than space pirates, which Dengar actually looks like. And now we're moving on to the bounty hunters with more of a purpose. Remember way back in like, like two, part two or three when I said that C-3PO and R2-D2 would be useless because of the characters that would be way ahead of them in the list? Fortunately, there are characters way up on the list that once you buy them in the store, they make the two protocol droids basically pointless. Well, Forlom and the character after this are those two characters. Forlom can't build though but that's really his only downside. Basically, I think Forlom is an agile C-3PO with a giant blaster. That's, that's basically what he is. Protocol droids are complete trash compared to these guys. Forlom will pretty much blast him out of the water because, yeah, get it, because Forlom has a blaster. Get it. No, I'm, I'm good with jokes. 
Here's the other droid bounty hunter, IG-88. I like IG-88 more than Forlom because he just looks... He just looks cooler. I'm, really, that's the only reason. He has the same abilities as Forlom, but I think IG-88 is just really cool. Okay. IG-88 is the last bounty hunter for now. There are other bounty hunters on the list, but they're way ahead of the of these bounty hunters and I'll tell you why when I get to them but for now indulge in IG-88's greatness he doesn't have a sniper rifle like he does in most things I see him in though so that's kind of weird but other than that it's pretty cool ah yes these little buggers they only showed up as enemies in one level in the entire game and they were pretty much a pain well they're a pain if you play as Luke they showed up in the Jedi Destiny level, you know, the level where Luke and Darth Vader fight Palpatine. The guards pop out occasionally. They they aren't hard if you just force choke them to death as Vader, but other than that, they're kind, they they can be kind of a pain. They block your attacks and stuff. And that's like the worst. The Imperial guards are basically just Jedi without the force abilities. But there's one thing that pisses me off about beyond belief about these guys. Remember when I complained about the Disarm Trooper actually being outrageous at times? Well, this is by far the best example of this BS. Why does the Disarm Trooper extra apply to Imperial Guards? They don't even have guns. I know they work for the Empire and all that, but why don't you just disarm Vader while you're at it? By the way, who are these Royal Guards? My best guess is that they're Stormtroopers and they, they were just so good at their jobs. They were promoted to stand out in front of the Emperor's throne room 99% of the time, doing nothing. And they replaced their blasters with giant spears. Now we finally move on to the Jedi in this game. The Jedi will take up a lot of the rest of the series in general, and I'm going to be talking about Jedi up until number 13. This, there will be a few episodes of just Jedi. So I'll start with Obi-Wan Kenobi from episode 1. If you haven't noticed, 90% of the footage I use for these videos has this very Obi-Wan as the second character. If you ever wonder why, it's because he's the second default character. Whenever you enter the game, you always start off as Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan because they're the first two characters you play as. So as you can imagine, I get bored with those two characters since I always start off as them. Well, none of the Jedi are fun to play as because 95% of them are all the same. There are a few different because of like different jumping animation or something. The point is this Obi-Wan Kenobi isn't very special. Neither are any. Really. I chose this Luke as the second worst Jedi because he only shows up in one level and his design isn't that great. I use the term worst loosely since, as I said, most Jedi are the same other than the design. Endor Luke is no exception, except that his design isn't just up to par, I guess. I think it's either the, the cape or helmet that's throwing me off. I like his green lightsaber though, you don't, you don't see that out, that often. Well, green is like the second most common lightsaber color, but you know how it is. My favorite lightsaber color is actually yellow. Ye yellow lightsabers were one of those things that started off in the expanded universe. I like it because it's the color for Jedi Sentinels, as they call them. Yes, this is the version of Luke that had Yoda on his back. You played as him during the Dagobah level, as you probably guessed based on the name. I like the fact that the developers actually implemented the Yoda on back aspect. I've never played this game co-op really so I, I have to wonder what does the person playing Yoda do in two player since part of the level requires Yoda on Luke's back in order for Luke to use the force ability does the person playing Yoda just sit there while Luke does all the work well I guess it doesn't really matter since soon after that Luke learns the force ability without having to have Yoda on his back think about Luke's design is pretty good for an early Lego game so that's why he's above Endor Luke Why is Padawan Anakin the worst version of Anakin? Well, it's the version from Episode 2. I, do I really need to explain more? I already expressed how much I despise that movie. I don't like sand. 
It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Not like here. It was just so bad. Here everything is soft and smooth. Padawan Anakin is playable in three levels, and these levels are the Droid Factory, Jedi Battle, and Count Dooku. Can I just say how unoriginal those level names are? Some of the levels in this game are kind of creative, like Jedi Destiny. I, I don't know, it might be a nitpick, but levels should have a name that will make you remember what the level is about. I don't know, may maybe it's just me. Yeah, it's, it's just me. 